Lord has given to you. God bless. Well, Pastor Wendell, you know this is my life. Amen. Amen. This is my joy. Amen. Welcome, everyone, and a pleasant good morning to everyone. Praise God. If we didn't get to see you for Thanksgiving, well, belated Thanksgiving greetings to you. Amen. Some say Thanksgiving is not over. I think they said yesterday, this is starting a new week. And well, Thanksgiving goes all the way to the end of the year. Praise God. But we thank God this morning for everyone. Amen. I hope you had a wonderful time um, spending with your family. I had a good time when Della cooked up the storm. And I was right there to eat up a storm. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. She allowed us that one day to splurge, and then we are back to carrot, carrot sticks and water. So, amen. We thank God anyhow. Praise God. This morning, I want to share with you, kind of do a little bit of teaching, if you mind. Amen. From the word of God, from the book of Psalms, chapter 90. Psalms 90 and verse 9. One verse of scripture. And while you turn to that, I would like to, um, you know, for us to join as a church for prayer. Got a call this morning for a young woman. Her name is, her first name is Michelle, and she's in a coma. She's under 40 with six children. And this evening, um, today, they're deciding whether to pull the plug on her. So can you imagine uh, the challenges for her six children, she's under 40, six children, and just had some asthma attack, and then, uh, you know, about um, in this situation. So, as a church, we were reached out to for prayer, and so, as we read the word of God, I want us to pray for this young woman at this time. Stand with me as we talk to God, and as we read the word of God. Psalms 90, and I'm reading this morning from the King James Version, amen? To so all those King Jamesers, here is your opportunity. Most of the time we read from the NIV, which is, for the, which is the same thing, just different flavor. But this morning, King James Version, because I like how King James Version put over this verse. Psalms 90, verse number 9 says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. He spent our years as a tale that is told. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spent our years as a tale that is told. This morning I want to share with you an uncommon topic, writing your life story. Writing your life story. Let's pray for this young woman. Father, we lift up this young woman before thee, O oh God. We don't know her, God, and we don't know her background, but God, that does not matter. But Father, we pray for this young mother of six children, that the family have to decide, O oh God, to take her off of life support today. Father, such an important decision, such a life-altering decision, O oh God, they have to make, O oh God. But Lord, we know that you are God of miracles, oh God. You are God that never leaves us or forsakes us, even in times like these. And Lord, we lift up this young woman, Michelle, before thee, oh God, as she lay on a bed of sickness, oh God. And our children are concerned, our family are concerned, oh God, our loved ones are concerned. Father, we pray and send the word of healing this morning. Touch that young woman, oh God. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, we pray, God, according to your will, raise her up in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Bring peace to that family. Oh God, as they handle this situation, fill the children's life with peace, oh God, as they are concerned, oh God, for their sick mother. And Father, we pray that your name will be glorified in you in this all. Now bless your word unto our hearts and glorify your name. This is our prayers in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen. You can be reseated. Writing your life story. If the story of your life had to be written, as a matter of fact, it is written, it is you know, it is um, written and you and I just probably don't know. We write our own story. What would it be? 
Let me ask you a question. Would it be a bestseller to our friends online? We greet you in Media Land. Thank you for joining this morning. But what would your life be if the story of your life had to be written? Would it be a bestseller? Would it be a bestseller? Or would it be a commentary just sitting in the corner of a dusty shelf? Would it be a story that will impact and change the life of others? Or would it be the story of a life that no one cares about? Gerald, some quotes this morning. I'll give you three of them. For those who are writing, you can take your bulletin, those who are in the service, those who are in the sanctuary. At the back of your bulletin, there is some space for you to make notes if you would like to. Gerald Butler wrote this quote. He says, be a, the hero of your own life story. Be the hero of your own life story. And when I read that thought, it kind of impacted me. I don't want nobody else to be the hero of my life story. You know, you know some people like to just slip in and save the day. And, you know, it's like, okay, I, catch, I caught her. I caught him just in time. And then they become the hero of your life story. No. I want to be the hero. Amen. Apart from Jesus, I want to be the hero of my life story. Chris Brogan said these words in this quote. Chris Brogan said these words in this quote. If you are not writing your own story, if you are not writing your own story, you are a character in someone else's. So if you are not writing your own story, somebody's going to pick you as a character in their story, their life story. And guess what? They're not going to put you as a star. You're not going to be the main act of their play. And then Albert Einstein said these words. There comes a point in your life when you need to stop reading other people's book and write your own. Hmm? There comes a point in time in our lives when we should stop reading other people's book and start writing our own. Most of us, most people so far has died and very little apart from the obituary that is written by someone else's. And that's why some people now, they write their own obituary because some people messes up their obituary. You know, they put the dates wrong, they put the, you know, where they went to school wrong. No. It's best for us to write our own life story. Let me tell you about the brain because this has, so in um, so endure with me a little bit as, as we go through the brain. You know, our brain is the functioning center of all activities. Before you and I, you know, do an act, it passes through the brain. The brain is the functioning center, the thinking, the nerve center where the thoughts are processed. Can I tell you something about our human brain this morning? probably some of us might not realize. Our human brain is composed of 12 billion nerve cells. That's something to know. Your teacher didn't tell you that in school. Or maybe you missed that science class. Right, Brother Malcolm. But our brain, our brain, and you can go out and you can ask somebody this question, man, you get out, how many nerve cells does your brain have? And they probably wouldn't know, but it says about 12 billion nerve cells. Our brain has. That's why you see, when people have brain injury and those nerve cells are damaged, you know, it is so impacting. When people have a stroke, right, Sister Lorraine, and those nerve cells are damaged, it affects their limbs, right? Am I right? Yeah, she's a physical therapist, right? I got that right. Our human brain, so it says it's composed over 12 billion nerve cells. With an analytical ability of a room full of Pentium equipped computers. So think about putting a room, let's think about this sanctuary, this room full of Pentium computers with massive hard drive that stores a lot of data. Think about our brain. Our brain is like that. Our brain receives and stores every kind of information shown its way. That's why we have to be very careful 
you know, what we receive into our brains, into our lives, into our minds. You know why? Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh in his or her heart, so is he. So the way people act is based on their thinking. It's very important for us to know, and somebody said this to me years ago, you know, people who look at pornography, that pornographic image can stay with that person for the next 90 years as clear as ever. Why? Because it is stored in the brain. Okay, today young people, I'm talking to young people, be careful what you see on your iPhone, on your Samsung, that your mama and your dad is still paying the bill for. Amen? Researchers tell us that the average adult in America, so we come now to our nation, Researchers tell us that the average adult in America is bombarded by 560 advertising messages every day. And some of these advertising, are they stupid? Liberty, liberty, liberty. Guy got bit by, you know, he wants to be Superman. He got bit by, by, by a spider and he's waiting. And he starts swelling up, and then the ambulance is taken away. He says, I might change yet. Liberty, liberty, liberty. So researchers tell us that the average adult in America is bombarded by 560 advertising messages. Our brains store over 500 slogans, songs, poems, and jingles every week. Our brain. It stores over 500 slogans. Everything you see online, read in the papers, whatever, songs, you know, and the poems and jingle, you know. Jingle, those little short musical stuff, it's like musical advertisement. And when you hear, when you hear those jingles, it's kind of, you know, wake you up. It's very important to us to know, in addition, the average adult absorbs 20 to 30,000 words per day. You know, 20 to 30,000 words per day is shown at us. And these words come through newspapers, through internet search engines, through magazines, through books, through what we see on the television. All these information are thrown at us. Why? Because as human beings, human beings, we have to function. And we have to be very careful that Satan use this information. He uses this information to get, you know, to get uh, to us. I was, reading, um, I was reading an article concerning the rapper that died, Young Dolph. You know, young people know about Young Dolph. I was trying to read about Young Dolph and, 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 and Yo Gotti and all, you know, all these rappers from, from Memphis and the beef and the fighting and trying to look a little bit on their life. I had to stop because the cursing and the lewdness that came out of these guys' mouth is not worthy for any one of us or our young people to absorb. But do you know what our young people are listening to today? Rap music. You know, now I'm not saying there's Christian rap, description rap music. Rap is just a form of music, but I'm talking about the ones out there, the hip hop that doesn't have anything to me with God. Can you imagine our children's mind are bombarding with the cussing and the lewdness and the, well, drop it like his heart gets old now. They already drop. Ain't no more dropping anymore. They already dropped to the ground. Everything already dropped. We need to understand that these infobits, the mountain of infobits, it shapes the way we view life. These infobits, these digital information, if, if we do not sanctify them as they come to our mind, they shape the way we see life, the way we think, the decisions we make, and the way we act. Why you think some of our guys would wear their pants halfway down? For the life of it. 
for the life of it, I mean, uh, you know, belt, belt is, is made to be worn around the waist, not around the knees. But the information today that our young people are getting is that, you know, you can walk, you know, so the guys is dropping it while the girls are pulling it up. You didn't get that. You'll get that on 287. So infobits, these infobits, these information, this digital information that comes our way, that comes to our mind. I'm getting to writing our lives. So it gets what? It impacts the way we think. It impacts the way we view life. It impacts the decisions we made. And it impacts the way we act and the way we speak. And you, you know, you, you know, you bring up your kids to speak properly and what? It's because they want to fit into the culture. These infobits inspires our hearts. These infobits shape our worldview of God, of the world, and of others. These information kind of, you know, make us. You know, I remember one of the times, you know, uh, you know there, there was a time and a season that when you pass, some of the guys in the corner, they would look you up and down. Haven't seen them, don't know them, but it was such an anger, you know, like, you know, like, what are you looking at me for? But it's because of the information in the uh, from the culture that surround us. We need to understand that with all this information, there's, you know, these experiences have developed into little voices in the corner of our brain that constantly speak messages of fear, messages of doubt, messages of shame, messages of inadequacy, messages of discouragement, of discontent, messages of loneliness and sadness, and the list goes on. So these messages that we receive into our brain, you know, if they are not from God, if they are not from the word of God, then they do not speak great volumes to our life to make us better people. Left alone, we follow their direction sometimes. And sometimes we find ourselves hiding in a corner and lashing out at others while life passes on. And we find ourselves, because of this information that we take in, we find ourselves repeating the same mistakes over and over again. It seems sometimes that we're making one step forward and two steps backward. We need to understand that our brain is inspired by the spirit that resides in us. So if the spirit of God resides in us, it's going to inspire our brain. God give us our brain. Amen? Amen. And how many billion, how many billion? 12 billion. There you go. You're listening to me. And so, so the spirit, God's spirit that resides in us, inspire our brain to think right, to reject evil thoughts, and to embrace good thoughts. The spirit of God that lives in us with all these negative information. You can't run away from this world. I can't run away from this world, right? I can't run away from this world. You know, guess what? You and I need to understand unless we have the power of God in us, we'll never make it out in one piece. Because the devil's aim is what? John 10.10, 10, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that's what he's doing. He's doing it now to every culture. He's doing that to our young people. He's doing that to our aged. He's telling our, our, our elderly folks that, okay, you know, nobody cares about you. You know, nobody cares about, you know, if you go or come, you know. And sometimes our elderly folks feel in a corner that, you know, I, you know nobody loves me. That thought bombards him. But when the Spirit of God lives in us, Hallelujah. It pushes away those negative thoughts. That's why the Bible says, uh, if the spirit of the Lord live in us, he shall quicken our mortal body. That's why we need in the church as believers, we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. We need the power of God in our life. For the Bible says in Acts 1.8, he shall receive power.
power. That power means ability. That power means authority. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's the Holy Spirit in us that helps us to reject negative thoughts. It's the Holy Spirit in us that tell us, hallelujah, that to speak to ourselves and tell ourselves that we are valuable in the sight of God. I just, uh, so we were talking yesterday and she was telling me about a young man and, you know, because of a certain situation, traveling with his daughter and, you know, and the situation was so negative against him, he just drove up on the bridge and he jumped right over and killed himself. Young man, not even start living. So we need to understand that the devil is out for us. And he's not our friend. And he's using all kind of information, digital information, circumstances, situations, our failures to get us in a corner whereby we'll feel less of ourselves and the story of our lives would be negative. So let, let's ask, what type of story are you writing for your life? Is it a classic? You know, a story of focus, of purpose, of joy, of blessing, or of triumph? What kind of story are you writing? Is it a mystery? Everything about you is secret? You have clandestine behaviors. <laughs> you know, people still try to figure you out. Some people like to say, you know, I am just, I am just private. I am just private. No, some people are not private. They're simply sneaky. Hmm? Yeah, they're, they're secretive. You know, everything about them. The story about your life, what kind, is it a fantasy, is it make-believe, is it Mary Poppins, is it, you know, is it historical fiction, always living in the past? Is the story of your life that is written right now, suspense, you know, always, you know, uncertainty, indecision, is the story of your life horror? Is it like a horror movie, a horror book, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it's terror? Is panic, is stress, is distress, is the story of your life drama, you know, like a drama, those drama novels, you know, it is all about performance and spectacle. Is the story of your life all about romance? Oh, he came and he picked me up and now not put you on the horse, but he put me in his Lamborghini. And he whisked me off. Oh, I'm just waiting for that rich man, that rich woman that would have a Lamborghini that they haven't paid for, that they're probably renting. Oh, this is about my life romance. Oh, if I can only find the right woman, if I can only find the right man. Oh, 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 my life is all about love. It's all about sex. It's all about lust. It's all about bodily satisfaction. Some people's lives. Truth be told, some people's lives. If it's, when it is written, it would be written that they always, all their life, chasing after man or chasing after a woman. Every year, same chapter. Now he wakes up. He washes his face, put on his clothes, and he's now chasing her again. It's now 2023. Does the story of our lives, a short story which is short, meaningless, and unfulfilled? You know, in our scripture reading, this verse is taken from the prayer of Moses. And he warns us, see, enlighten us. He says, for our days have passed away in thy wrath, in God's wrath. Our lives are passed away in, in God's wrath. When we are outside of God, a person is under the judgment of God. That's why it is very important for us to get saved. Somebody say amen to that. It's very important if you are a backslider this morning, it is very important for you to come back to God. Because the judgment of God hangs over a person that is not connected to God. But he says, we spend our years as a tale that is told. Our life, each one of us, our lives are a story. That is told to our family, that is told to our friend, that is told to our community, that is told to our world. Is it a great story? Is it a classic? Is it a wonderful story? I love, I love the song. The last song we said, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. 
Hallelujah. And then you came and sing a little louder. Oh, praise God. I don't know all the words this morning. Try to remember them, lest I say the wrong words. But if you listen to that story, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Hallelujah. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises from up from the ashes. Oh, glory to God. Hope shall arise. Amen. Death is defeated and the king is alive. Hallelujah. That's part of my life story. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but that's part of my life story. Up from the ashes, uh, hope will arise. Uh, death is defeated, uh, and the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords lives in me. What will be the story of your life? Hmm. It is time to make some changes. It is time for us to learn from the past. It is time for us to envision a bright and blessed future despite where we came from. Despite what we have gone through, we are still here this morning. Amen. By the grace of God. Despite what people said about our lives, uh, that we will not make it, uh, that nothing will amount uh, to our lives, uh, by the grace of God, uh, we are still here, uh, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. It's time to make a change. Uh, it's time to learn from the past, not to repeat uh, the same old mistakes again. It is time to envision a brighter and blessed future. I don't know about you, but because he lives, uh, I can face tomorrow. Uh, because he lives, uh, I'm talking about Jesus. All my fears are gone. Uh, can I talk to you this morning? And uh, because I know uh, who holds my future, my life is worth living. Hallelujah. I said my life is worth living. Your life is worth living. Amen. I don't care what the economists say. I don't care what Wall Street says. I don't care. Hallelujah. What the negative people say today. Hallelujah. Because Jesus lives. All my fears are gone because he holds my future. Life is worth living. I don't have to give up. I don't have to think about committing suicide. I don't have to think about drinking my life away or drugging my life away. Guess what? My life, uh, hallelujah, has purpose in this world. It is time to do some daily updates. You know, now we live in a digital generation and it's all about the updates, you know? Every uh, software that you get, uh, you know, although they make money off of us by the updates, they could have fixed that thing long ago, but they make money, right, Brother Sean? They make money off of the updates. Uh, oh, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, and then you have 1.2, uh, and 1.3, uh, and 1.4, but sometimes in the lab, they already have the patches uh, for 1.4, but every year, you need an update. And so they up the price on us. Isaiah 48 10 says, Behold, I have refined you, God's thing. Behold, I refine you, but not with silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. So whatever you and I have gone through, it is God's laboratory to make us better. Somebody say make us better. Think about it. Just think about it. Whatever negative things you have gone through today, Whatever challenge you have passed through in life, hallelujah. It might, the thought of it might be still painful, but God you brought you through, hallelujah. Those storms, God brought us through those pains uh, to make us a better person today. You know, I think about people who, you know, the life story that was written. I think about Joseph. Joseph, his life started off you know, just as a simple young man. And as a simple young man, you know, his father sent him out to take care of the, sh uh, to, to look, check out his brothers. And then he, you know, to, to, to check out his brother. His brothers hated him. They just hated him. Okay? So he started out as a disadvantage. But guess what? He continued to serve God. Uh, his brothers, his own brothers sold him out. You know, I guess blood is thicker than water didn't work here, right? You know, his own family sold him, but his own brothers sold him, put him in a pit first, sold him. But let me tell you, 
David was, Joseph was determined that there was not, then his brothers were not going to write his story. He's going to write his story. Amen. And his story is going to end well. So even in the pit, he trusted God. He got into the house of Potiphar, and the Bible says in Genesis 39, and God blessed the house of Potiphar because of Joseph's sake. Not only God blessed him, but he blessed those around him. Potiphar's wife, you know, saw him and she made a pass on him. He rejected the woman, you know, a woman scorned, and then, or a man scorned, and she, he rejected or offered to sleep with her. And back to the dungeon he goes. But Joseph was determined that his life was not going to end that way. He continued to trust God. I'm talking to someone this morning. You feel like Joseph. Uh, you feel like your life, it seems like an up and down, up and down. One time you're on the mountaintop, next time you're in the dungeon. One time you're up on the mountaintop, next time you're in the but, but let me tell you, if you hold on to the God of your salvation, uh, if you hold on to the rock of your salvation, uh, if you hold on to the stone that the builders uh, have rejected uh, hallelujah your story your life story is gonna end well the bible said in the nick of time uh, hallelujah the king needed some advice uh, he needed someone to interpret the dream and there was no one but Joseph, hallelujah. Let me tell you, God is about to call your name in some high places this morning. Somebody didn't hear me this morning. That's the reason why you didn't shout amen. God is about to call your name in some high places this morning. God is about to call your name among some people, hallelujah, that can push you to the next level. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You might feel you're in a dark room, but God is about to bring you out into the light for his glory is about to add to your life story and this Joseph moved from the pit to becoming the prime minister of Egypt from the place where he served hallelujah to the place where people were serving him amen somebody say amen I think about Joseph, David. I think about David. You know, David started off his humble life as a shepherd boy. You know, being a shepherd was like one of the most menial jobs back in those times. And he was there in the backside of the desert. Nobody knew him. Nobody, you know, I, I mean, if he wrote his resume, nobody would look at it. They would just throw it in the garbage can. But not so God. It was God who was writing David's resume. And when Saul needed, a, a soldier oh glory to god when saul needed someone to take down the goliath the champion of the philistines all the other soldiers uh, with their man written uh, resume uh, were not qualified because they were shaken uh, in fear but there was one man uh, that god was building uh, at the backside of the desert uh, and his name was david uh, and david told the giant you come to me uh, with your sword and spear uh, hallelujah but my story is written right now i come to you uh, in the name of the lord uh, our god hallelujah and on that that day uh, he struck down Goliath uh, and gave an entire nation victory. One man's story. One man's story lift the morale of a nation. One man's story cause another nation uh, to serve uh, another. Let me tell you, my friends, uh, if you allow God uh, to write your story, uh, and you might not get this message in its entirety today, but as you live life, you're going to get it. If you allow God uh, to write your story, hallelujah, if you trust him uh, with the pen uh, of your life, uh, your story and my story, uh, hallelujah, would end up blessed. Uh, we will be singing like the songwriter, this is my story, uh, and this is my song uh, praising my savior all the day long look at us right now some of us maybe we are in chapter 49 of our lives some of us we are in chapter 65 of our lives Oh, some of us, we are in chapter 70 of our lives. Uh, yes, the first few chapter of our lives. Uh, oh, yeah, it wasn't good, but since we met Jesus... Oh, glory be to God. I think I hear some godly people this morning. I think I hear some people who have been transformed by the power of God. We went through up and down. 
poverty and insult. Uh, hallelujah. Uneducated. Uh, hallelujah. Some of us were. But when we came to Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. He start writing uh, our life story. Uh, he pick us up. Uh, and he turn us around. Uh, and he plant our feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, hallelujah. He blessed us uh, in places uh, that we never imagined. Uh, and look at our lives now. Uh, we dressing good. Uh, we smelling good. Uh, we eating good. Uh, we living good. Uh, hallelujah. It is not our doing. Uh, but it is God uh, helping us to write uh, our life story. And so far it is good. Hallelujah. Anybody enjoying the life story this moment? Hallelujah. I know you might not like where you are. Hallelujah. But you are not where you used to be. Oh, praise God. You know, we just can't talk about men. We got to talk about Esther, woman. Esther. Esther life story. She was in the back. Nobody knew about that. Nobody cared about Esther. But then the Jews needed someone to go represent them before the king. And it was not the popular and the in thing for a woman to appear before the king. But Esther says, if I perish, let me perish. I am going to see the king. Mordecai alive was on the line, the nation, uh, the Jewish nation, uh, their lives were on the line. But Esther said, I am getting up. I am getting ready right now. And I'm going to see the king. There must be deliverance. And there must be the change and today we read the story of Esther hallelujah in the Bible it is one of triumph it is one of courage it is one of breakthrough thank God for women like Esther who do not back down from a challenge I'm not talking being obnoxious so the Lord has given each one of us an opportunity to start over you know that uh, do you know that? Little Sean, you know every day you get up and I get up that God gives us another opportunity to start over. Uh, 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 some people in, in this life wouldn't give us that chance. But God does. He gives us another chance. Every time you open and I open our crusty eyes with all the boogers, hallelujah, before we go to the sink, God has given us uh, another opportunity in different avenues of life to start all over again, all over. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you that you didn't take me before my purpose uh, have been fulfilled. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you still give me another opportunity for me to complete my assignment uh, that you have placed me here on earth uh, hallelujah because at the end of it all i want to be like paul i fought the good fight i finished my course i have kept the faith amen our life story so the lord gave each other one of us an opportunity to start over telling our life story it depends from where we start so can i give you a, a challenge today you and i beginning from today we have a 34-day challenge to change things. If the Lord's will that you and I live to the end of this year, beginning from today, I think I checked it over and over and over and over. I think it's 34. We have 34 days to make our lives better. Somebody say amen to that. I hear one amen. Amen. You, have, you and I have 34 days Hallelujah, to the end of the year to begin to rewrite our life story. People might have write us off, they might have count us out, but God did not. Amen. So you and I have 34 days to begin to write our life story. We have 34 days to make some new changes. Oh, thank God. Hallelujah. I think it's what Jobu says. There is no repentance in the grave. You can't change anything once you are dead. Hallelujah. With this thing, there's no purgatory. Hallelujah. There's no second chance. Hallelujah. You got one chance and that is life. I got one chance and that is life uh, hallelujah and god by his grace uh, give us 34 days if he holds us to the end of the year to make some new changes what changes are you going to make start writing yes the class started what changes are you going by the time you leave the service you should at least have written down two changes uh, 
two life changes uh, that you want to make before the end of the year two life changes uh, that will impact your life that will cause you uh, to draw closer to god 34 days uh, we have to make some new life changes 34 days to allow the lord to enhance and enrich our lives that 34 days Make it God hold us to the 31st of December. We got 34 days to allow the Lord to enhance and enrich your life. That means at the end of this year, you and I should be a better person. If we are a complainer, hallelujah, we should allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and turn our lives around and we become a person who prays God. Somebody say amen. 34 days to make up that which was lost. You know, that which was lost. We have lost a lot. COVID has caused us to lose a, a lot. Amen. In our lives. We have lost time. We have lost opportunity. God is opening up the windows of opportunity for us to make up. Somebody say make up. Make up that which was lost. Amen. Whatever opportunity we have lost to make it up. That including our tithing too, right? Okay, now you're getting quiet on me. You're getting quiet on me. Amen. 34 days for us to get back on track with God. The Bible says, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. 34 days to get rid of some of life's weight. Some of us have too much weight on our lives. I'm not talking about bodily weight. Amen. You know, we can show that in. But we got a lot of weight on our life. A lot of stuff. We carry them from since 1945. Or 1986, and every year we carry them. The Lord is saying, It ain't good to bring it into your life story. You need to close the door in some, some of these stuff. Say, Close the door. So, how can we rewrite our life story? How can we rewrite our story? Okay, let me just give you a few thoughts. It's 10 of them. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Number one, repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So, if your life has been messed up, if your life has been down in the dumps, if your life has been messed up by sin, this is an awesome time. God is saying, if you want to rewrite your story, <laughs> he says, repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Acts 2.38, Peter speaking to the crowd, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the Holy Ghost. It is time for us to come back to God. So if you want to rewrite our story, amen. Because many times, sometimes when people ask me about myself, guess what? I don't start from the day I was born. I start from the day I was reborn. Oh, good God. Nobody heard me this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I start sometime from the day heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen. Some people like to know the drama and all about your past life amen but all of that now is under the blood hallelujah it's now covered by the blood hallelujah you want to know my life story hallelujah i was a sinner sinking in sin but then i found jesus i repented and accept christ into my life and the word of god says if any man be in christ you creature so one of the first things we want to start rewriting our life story is to repent and accept Christ as I say. The second thing is that we have to pursue the Lord with a deeper passion. A stronger passion than shopping on Black Friday. Right? Uh, we had too much passion for the Black Friday anyhow. But we have to pursue God with a deeper passion, not just coming to church. Not just going through the motion, not just feel well. I'm going to come to church on Sunday so that my week can go well. That is an insult to the integrity of God. So if we want to rewrite our story, we have to, we have to make this decision to pursue the Lord with a deeper passion. When I get up, it's all about the Lord. When I go out, it's all about the Lord. Wherever I go in life, it's all about Jesus. My speech, hallelujah, would be a litter that, with the name Jesus. Hear what the psalmist David says in Psalms 42 1. He says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. He had a passion for God. 
Everything about him, David was God. David had fine furniture. David had servants. But those things meant nothing to him. What meant more to him was God Almighty. If we want to rewrite our life story, pursue the Lord with a deeper passion. Thirdly, confront hoarding in your life. Hmm? Confront hoarding in our lives. You know, you ever look at the, 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 uh, the show Hoarders? The commercial turns you off of all this stuff that people have. All this stuff that is packed up for years and, and then garbage comes on it and it looks so, it is time to be free. Amen? It is time to set ourselves free. It's time for us to get upset with ourselves and just get in it and start giving away. Amen? Maybe some of us need to be baptized with the spirit of just giving away. We got too much. Too much suit, too much dress, too much shoes, uh, too much handbags, too much this. You stress such on Sunday morning. What should I wear? This is not matching with this. You know, I can't wear this anymore. This is old fashioned. And I get a spirit of giving away. And give away the good stuff. Not talking about the junk, you know, the stuff where all the under the arm are white. You don't want anybody to give that to you, right? You don't want that to be part of your life story, that this is what she gave me. Confront hoarding, you know, we, we do not only hoard, you know, material possessions. Some of us, we hoard a lot of other stuff. Some of us, we have people in our minds living rent free. Mm, anywhere we go, they're living there rent free. Some of us, us right now, we need to evict them. We need to evict some people out of our minds. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're hoarding them. You're keeping them. They're not adding any value to your life. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great clouds of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily Entangles. I don't know if Jada Pinkett got this word entanglement from. I'm catching some of you this morning. Fourthly, <laughs> if we're going to write, we write our story, we need to forgive those who hurt us. We need to be forgiven. And there's something about forgiveness. We need to be quick in forgiving. You and I would live this life long enough for people to hurt us. And sometimes you know who hurts us the most? The people that are close to us. And the people that we give our time and our help the most, sometimes they're the one who hurt us. And sometimes we've said, never again. Never again. But if we want our life story to be one of a classic, one of good, then we have to learn to forgive those who hurt us. And maybe even as I speak with you, somebody passed across your mind. They have hurt you like, 10, 12 years ago, and God is saying forgive. Now hear what Matthew 6, 15 says. Matthew 6, 15 says, But if we do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Okay? So the Lord is saying through Matthew, he says, if we don't forgive others, the Lord will not forgive our sins. Unforgiveness will trip us up. Unforgiveness will thwart our success. Unforgiveness will hinder our blessing. Unforgiveness will paralyze our drive. We need to forgive. We need to be quick, sincere, and wise in our forgiveness. Amen? If you want to rewrite our story, because some people should be told, the minute you look at them, you can tell they're bitter. Have you, have you known anybody like that? Something happened to them, maybe... Uh, Wife walked out on them, a husband walked out on them, maybe the job fired them and so on. They're still bitter. They look bitter. They talk bitter. You know, if you go to their house and they serve you a meal, you better believe it will be. I ain't coming. If you're bitter, I ain't coming to eat by you. <laughs> okay. If you want to rewrite our story, we need to renew. This is for married folks now. Married folks. Married men and women. It says, renew your love for your spouse. In Ephesians, the Bible tells, it says, 
husbands, love your wife. I'm not talking about people shacking up. No, this ain't for you. All right? I ain't talking about people who you engage for like 10 years now. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about a man and a woman. The Bible says, renew your love. If you want to write your story over, every day renew your love for your spouse. Tell her, tell him, hallelujah, that you are beautiful. Tell, you know, you know, you know, tell them words that of endearment. Uh, we have married folks here in here this morning online. We got married folks. Hallelujah. Tell them, you know, I think we'll have less contention when we speak good about each other. Amen. Somebody saying amen. Amen. At the back there. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody, hallelujah, is going to get a better night's sleep. Uh, hallelujah. As a spouse, when you tell uh, each other. Amen. Your marriage is going to stretch out longer. Deep. Hallelujah. Sister Corbin, I was thinking about you. How long you guys marry? I take it from Sister Cora. 43 years. Stand up, stand up and let the church see, hallelujah, the goodness of God, hallelujah. Stand up, hallelujah, 43 years of marriage, amen. Give God some praise, hallelujah. Amen. If you, if you, hallelujah, if you want to get married, you're looking to get married, hallelujah, or you're married and you want some advice, talk to them. 43 years, thank you. Amen. Now, Dick, take her out to lunch. Hallelujah. You can tell they're writing their life story. Hallelujah. 43 years of marriage. And as they pass, I look at them. And when Dick is talking to her, Sister Cora eyes blink behind those glasses. Hallelujah. She just grabbed his hands. Come, John. Come. Let us, let us go, John. 43 years. And she ain't kicking him out. 43 years. And she's still loving like the first day. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Isn't that a good story to write? Right? All right, we're down to number six. Oh, you enjoying it this morning? God is rewriting your life story. Make restitution where it is possible. In the English Standard Version, Romans 13 7 said, Pay to all what you owe them. That's including the library, all the books. Pay to all what you owe them. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. So young people, let me start with you first. You owe your parents respect. And all the young people say, and all the young people say, I don't care how much you pay, your parents nag. Hallelujah. Praise God. One day you'll become a parent. Uh, one day you'll be in their shoes and you'll understand. Right, Maria? That's fun with our Thanksgiving day. One day. Joking with Melissa. <laughs> and she was put up that this young kid uh, write a note. This young girl write a note to one of the boys and she went off the handle. I was having a good laugh behind the digital desk. And I said, let me see how you can handle this one. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. And she did well. So, for you to give a cup of water, for you to call on their birthday, for you to give them a hug, for you to say, I love you. You're going to be like that. You would want to do that. So while you have in your life, while you're writing your life story, may it be that I'm a child that loved my mom, I love my dad, unto the end. Amen. Preaching good. The Bible says in Romans 7 8, it says, Oh, no one anything except to love each other. The Lord said, Don't owe nobody anything. I see people lifting up their hands. Amen. Anybody want some debt? D-E-B-T I'm talk talking about. If you don't have a plan to get out of debt, you will never get out of debt. Debt is not from the Lord. When you get out of debt, you make pastor works, pastor work less. Somebody said, well, pastor, how do I make myself debt free? Well, don't first, don't make the debts. 
And I'm glad for those who did not unnecessarily go to shop on Black Friday. Black Friday, I'm pushing, I'm getting what? A one 17 inch TV. So make a plan to get. So don't get into debt. You have to make a plan to say, you know what? First, let me tell you, <laughs> I was smiling. You might say, Pastor Tiding again. Let me tell you, you and I will never get debt free until we honor the Lord by bringing back what belongs to the Lord. You want to get debt free? Some people say, well, I'm going to God debt. You will not be blessed. That's good preaching, man. Mm-hmm. Yes, so you have to make a plan. But look, I don't need this. If I've been doing without it for two months, I don't need this. You know, I can mix and match. I don't care. Nobody looking what you're wearing on Sunday morning. You could wear the same suit, you know. And, you, know you, you know, you don't have to run to the cleaners. Every, you know, do you see the price for food? When Ellen and I, we were in this grocery store on Wednesday, and we were like, good Lord. I mean, woman was checking, and then the machine was going, I'm like, Pull out the credit card and we're like, mm mm. I mean, I was happy when she said, because of all this amount, you can get a ham or a turkey. Said, at least we're getting something, honey. Then, not only the price of food, but do you see here in our good old country, America, how much we waste? How much we dump on Friday, dump on Saturday? We can, some of us dumping today. Some of us, I don't eat leftovers. I learned very quick to eat leftovers. The eighth thing, okay, I got a couple more and then we're done. The eighth thing to rewrite our story is to disassociate ourselves from people, places, things, and habits that does not add value to our lives. If we want to rewrite our story, sometimes we got to cut ourselves off from some people. Not that we hate them, right, Dick? But they're not good for us. You know, they, they don't add value to our lives. As a matter of fact, some of them, they sap up our time so much. I'm not saying don't be compassionate to people. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that some people are not ready to make a change. Six months you're talking to them, and they're not ready to make a change. Five years, and they're not ready to make a change. Why? Why? Why in good common sense should I be wasting my time? I keep praying for you, but I'm done talking. Till you're ready to change, you'll get my time. Amen? So if you want to rewrite our story to be a blessed one in a classic, we need to disassociate ourselves from people, places, things, and habits that does not add value to our lives. Number nine, and then we'll come to the last one. We need to make a lie about giving glory to God. We need to make our lives about giving glory to God. In this time, people are too much about credit. It's me, give me the likes, give me the days, give me all, everything. They kind of take Instagram and I'm going to put it up in the IG and I'm going to drop it in your DM and all these minds because it's all about them. And when people do not like this stuff, they get mad. We want to rewrite our story. Let it be a life that give God constant glory and praise. Paul to the Corinthian Christians in 1 Corinthians, he says, uh, verse 10, 31, he says, so whether you eat, mm -hmm. some of us needed this verse before Thanksgiving, but you'll get it now after Thanksgiving. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. This verse trumps gluttony. Some people get all they can, Put it in a can and then they eat everything. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do, whether in words or deeds, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, to him. So that is Colossians 3.17. And then the final, the final step, or if you want to call it, or practice, is to become a true worshiper. If we want to re rewrite our life story, become a true worshiper. You see, worship transforms not only our atmosphere, but worship, hallelujah, although it gives glory to God, it transforms us. When we can offer a sacrifice of praise, even when we are going through, David knew that. 
He said, I will bless the Lord when? Sometimes? No. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue be in my mouth. On payday, his praise is going to be in my mouth. On days when I'm broke, his praise is going to be in my mouth. When I'm sick of my bed, his praise is going to be in my mouth. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in thee. I'm going to boast about the Lord. The humble shall dare often be glad. He said, magnify the Lord with me. He called in the wider community. He says, magnify the Lord with me and let us all exalt his name together he said i saw the lord and he heard me and he delivered me from out of my somebody scream thank you jesus hallelujah if you are gonna write your life uh, to be a worshiper if this is your last day on earth uh, let it be a life of a worshiper hallelujah if they're taking you to jail uh, like paul and silas uh, let your life be uh, a life of a worshiper if you are like gideon uh, coming up against the enemy uh, let your life be uh, a life of a worshiper let me tell you this morning worship wins war worship will defeat your enemy worship will make your life richer let me give you a concluding thought and i'm done this thought come from richard paul evans richard paul evans write these words he says the most important story we'll ever write in life is our own not with ink but with our daily choices every day we live we are writing a page in the book of our lives every day you and i live we are writing a paragraph hallelujah in the, the, the book of our lives every year that god has caused us to embrace uh, we are writing uh, another chapter in the book of our lives what would be what kind of book will it be would it be a book where nobody cares or would it be a book where someone is breaking down the door so to speak to learn from your life like we are learning from the life of others May the Lord help us to write great stories of our lives that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren at one day can read and study about us and know that we have first been faithful to the God of our salvation. Oh, I thank God for the unwritten stories of my grandma and my mom and my dad's life and some of my aunts, uncles. I thank God for the the great stories as a young man i observed them observed some of the things they did my grandma sunday was an honorable day sunday you couldn't play any i mean it was like but she taught us to honor god on the lord's day hallelujah we couldn't go out and play it was all church and they didn't kill us and so when it comes to the lord's day i'm like my mom i get up and sometimes by Tuesday, Wednesday, I know what I'm wearing to come to church on Sunday. Because I want to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What is your story going to be? If your story, at the end of your life, your story is placed in a book, what would it be? Would it be one of drama, mystery? Would it be a science fiction? Pokemon, whatever? Or would it be a classic of one who trusted the Lord High and low, trusted the Lord. And like Paul, he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept my faith. I'm ready to see the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, for your goodness. We thank you, O God, for your mercy, O God. Because every day, every day, some of us, we are writing another paragraph of our lives, another chapter of our lives. We are writing it. And Lord, we pray today that whatever is written by the pen of our decisions daily, it would be something that would bring glory to your name. And Lord, even when we mess up, you give us another chance to go back, sometimes tear up those pages and rewrite the story of our lives. This morning, 
as I say, you and I have a 34 day challenge to the end of the year to rewrite our life story. By January the 1st, 2022, you should be standing in victory, stronger than you have ever been. So, friends online, may God help you to, re to, to write a powerful life story about yourself. Through the highs and lows, uh, the ups and downs, may God help you to write a powerful story of his grace, his mercy, and his love. I want to pray for every one of us this morning. Stand to your feet. Because this is a message that now we have to apply daily. Daily to our life. Father, right now I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray in the name of Jesus as we stand. We all stand on common grounds. Because our life story is written daily about us. Lord, we pray, O oh God, today that you'll forgive us for our mistakes, our missteps. You'll forgive us, O oh God, for the pitfalls that we have made in life by bad decisions. But Lord, we pray, O oh God, that as we move on today, that our life story would be one of the grace and the goodness and the blessings of God. Lord, that others will see, O oh God, and they will give you glory and praise. For your wondrous works. So I ask, oh God, that right now you will strengthen us. You will bless us, those of us in the sanctuary, those of us online. God, we pray that our life story, some of us, we came out from poverty. Some of us, we came out of, out of need. Some of us, we came out, out of abuse. But oh God, your grace has transformed us today. Pray God that every day that we write our life story, would be something that you will be happy about so we ask your blessing today in jesus name amen lift your hands and just give god praise today hallelujah start start by being a worshiper this morning start your life story by being a worshiper this morning hallelujah 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 let it be said uh, that you are someone who worship the lord uh, in spirit and in truth uh, hallelujah yes just worship him uh, be grateful be thankful uh, hallelujah you might not be uh, where you want to be but thank god you are not where uh, you used to be uh, give god the praise give him the praise this morning hallelujah thank you jesus you are a good god uh, thank you lord you are merciful god thank you lord Thank you, oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can be reseated this morning. Amen. And with that said, it's just a great, great opportunity for us. The best thing we can do with our lives is just to live for God. And I tell you what, I don't know about you, but if I had another life to live here on earth, guess what? I live it for Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? I live it for Jesus. Amen. I serve him with my entire life. So be it known that as you live every day, you and I live every day, the stories of our lives are written by the pen.